we help businesses better know who their potential customers are, their existing customers are, and who their employees are. In the online global village in which we all live and operate, understanding who someone is, are they really who they say they are, where are they and what they like, is fundamental to better servicing uh, businesses and consumer customers. And that's what, that's what we do and that's what we help. And we call that identity data intelligence. We provide this intelligence, a very simple and differentiated business model. We work very hard to make sure that we collect or have access to the broadest and deepest data coverage globally. And today we work with over 200 data partners. We have access to over 400 data sets. And when we think about data, we think about it in four areas. Firstly, what we call traditional data. So that's date of birth, um, physical postcode, for example. Um, and that's data that's readily available, but is a very, still a very valid way of understanding who someone is. You then think about three other elements, which gives a better understanding of who an individual is. Uh, that could be digital data, that could be through cookies, device IDs, and that really starts to give you the picture of where is someone, uh, and equally, are they who they say they were, are. Then the third area is biometrics. That could be facial, it could be voice, um, and this again gives another way of validating is someone who they really say they are. And last but not least, uh, behavioural data, which predominantly comes, of course, from social media activity, which starts to give much more insight into people's likes and dislikes. So those are the, the way we think about data, and, and our, therefore the data is the fuel that powers our engines. And the engines really is our products and our tech. And uh, our products and tech, we believe and know because our customers tell us, is best in market. And both organically in a, and inorganically, we ensure that we have the latest technology, whether that's document verification, software as a service address validation, because um, the better products and tech we have on the broad uh, depth of data gives better outcomes and insight for our customer base. So our, our products and our technology are really focused on three broad solution areas for our customers. Forward risk and compliance, customer and location intelligence, and understanding one's employees. So if you think very simply, it's about a broad reach of global data giving better understanding for businesses about their customers and brought to life or the insight is created through our products and technology. And the best, in terms of numbers, we can verify 4.4 billion of the world's population today in terms of, for example, understanding how old people are. I've known GBG for a long time prior to joining as CEO and I've always been, uh, what I phrase as a distant admiration of the company because it was very clear to me from the outside that GBG had a very clear and differentiated strategy and, their, and the track record speaks for itself. Having now been in the organisation for a number of months, you know, I believe that we have three very clear um, differentiators to the, to, in the marketplace. Firstly, it is about our broad, um, both geographically and depth, uh, data, access to data, working with a 200 data, over 200 data partners and 400 data um, data sets. Secondly, is our world-class uh, leading products and technology. Uh, GBG, I think, made an incredibly uh, sensible decision a number of years ago that says we're not the biggest, so we're going to be the best, and we're going to make sure we have the best product in the marketplace to win and grow. And that's been uh, coupled over the last few years, both organically and inorganically, in terms of making sure that we're investing um, in making sure our tech, our technology is uh, up to date, first class, in terms of right through from user experience uh, to um, uh, resilience and ease of use. Um, so, so products and tech is a second differentiator and uh, holds us very well positioned. And then last but not least is actually our 770 or so team members we have in 17 countries around the world. Uh, GBD has been historically very right, rightly proud about the very high levels of engagement. For example, 87% of our team members would recommend GBG as a place to work. On Glassdoor, we have a rating of 4.4 out of 5, which is incredibly high. And there, there really is a very simple reason that our team members are highly engaged and committed to working at GBG. And that is they feel, um, I think absolutely rightly, that GBG treats them as an individual, not as a number. Uh, and that really does make a huge competitive differentiation. But it isn't just the high levels of engagement, it's the skills. Uh, we have some of the uh, uh, most capable, biggest brains when it comes to things like document validation and 
you know, through machine learning and artific artificial intelligence. And, and these individuals are motivated to work for a company like us because we are working at the cutting edge of technology breakthrough. So really, I think that there's three core strengths that I see that we have as a company. Our global access, uh, data access, our products and technology, and our team members. In terms of uh, areas to, to further strengthen the organization, well, first, firstly, um, it's evolution, not revolution. The track record speaks for itself. We're well positioned in a very fast growing marketplace. But there clearly are areas that, that we can build upon. Firstly, it's about building on our, our differentiators, our strengths, and that is our products and our innovation. But then the real, the real shift where I see a really significant opportunity over the, over the longer term for the organization is what I describe as pivoting a little bit more towards the customer. So if five or five to ten years ago we made a very conscious decision to focus on having the best products in the market, we need to build on that, but equally focus on making sure that we um, have, you know, we are seen and perceived by our customers as being the very best, as, as, as well as having the very best products in the market. So plenty of opportunity to further enhance, um, but it really is about shifting not, not moving away from our core strengths, but making sure that, that customer intimacy becomes a core strength as well. We're very fortunate as a business to be in a, an early stage marketplace that has many, many more years uh, to grow. The dynamics in the marketplace are that more people are using uh, the web. There's going to be more people on the earth accessing the web. Compliance plays to our strengths because 70% of our business is targeting fraud, risk and compliance. And analytics on uh, individuals uh, and information about people as market countries progress uh, is doubling every two years. Uh, we're a disruptor through our technology of the, of the marketplace, so we're in a very good position naturally to, to grow. If we move that down to three themes that we uh, apply internally, We've got our, our organic growth, so we've had three iterations of our strategy, evolutions of our strategy over the past uh, eight years. And in that, that's within our control. So the organization is um, running towards uh, our own visions, objectives and strategies. Uh, and our strength on that is our uh, best in class products uh, and our great people to, to, to deliver those. The next stage of our growth is on the businesses that have joined the company that we've acquired, uh, then we grow those businesses um, at a higher rate prior to, to when we've uh, uh, acquired them. And the reason for that is that we've got access to uh, 70 countries through customers, and we've got locations in many areas. So we've got channel to market that the best in class software that we buy into the business can be grown faster. The other element that uh, we're able to do as well is that we tend to invest in the businesses that we buy in to facilitate greater growth as well. And then the final stage is that, uh, as I said earlier, our market is really early stage. As a consequence of that, it's very fragmented. So there's a number of businesses that we would like to uh, bring on board their technology through, through buying those businesses. So the third stage is through bolt-on acquisitions. And the reason we're doing that is that we've we're buying in capability that, that would take us a long time to develop. Uh, and by doing that, then if you just refer back to my um, previous comment, when businesses join, we manage to grow those businesses faster than, than we can ourselves. The reason why we think GBG is an attractive investment um, business is that we've got a business that is financially strong, it's got very good metrics, it's got good organic growth, bolt on acquisitions, improving margins. Uh, our performance has proven that. We're also in the very early stages of a developing marketplace. Um, so over the past um, eight years, we've managed to grow the business considerably. The, the financial dynamics that um, investors could be interested in, in terms of revenue growth, margins improvements, and uh, high cash to EBITDA, are very strong in our business. That's underpinned uh, as well of, that we've got a high revenue visibility of the broker's consensus head. We can see about 70% of the, the revenue. So we're fairly safe in that, uh, in that position. The final um, area that, of interest to, to investors is due to the business model that we adopt um, 
and in the co-opetition marketplace that we are in, we've got very strong sustainable barriers to entry. Um, the fact underpinning those is that our co-opetition partners, people that we sell to, buy from and compete with, are organised differently. They're organised by geography. And our products and services serve the global marketplace. So that proves a, a long-term sustainable barrier to entry.